Uh, we're talking about scalability we're now. We're really pretty much talking about scalability, haven't we? But let's do it. So um, this is another survey from uh, Shared Services Link. Uh, this is from 2015, and they're asking, what does your organization struggle with digital technology? We've mentioned this at the start, legacy yeah. systems, right? Exactly. This Biggest is, one. This is how we've always done it, or we're too, like, they're just too scared. It's a big change, it's an well, expensive change, but it's like, it's like cars, right? So you've got your car, you know, it's a, a 51 reg, um, and you've been running it for, for nearly 20 years now. Um, but it, it works okay. You yeah. Know, a little bit of maintenance here and there. It's got the memories in it. 150,000 miles. It's called Sally. Yeah, you love it to bits. You know, it's all, you've got the memories. Um, but, you know, every year you're spending... But she lets you down. Every year you're spending yeah. exactly you're spending money on it, right? Yeah. Uh, for the MOT and the services and the oil changes and the brakes and the tires and the yada yada yada, uh, and then you go to the when you go to, to do well, the service. even if you like you want to put Bluetooth, you want to yeah. you know, change yeah, out yeah, the cassette, yeah. you want to put in like we can't even exactly. put in like yeah, yeah. your mates come in and they're like. Yo, check out this song, and you're like, hang on a second, I've only got this one tape of like, do you really like it? Yeah. Is, is it wicked? And yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not. It's not ready to adapt as quickly as you want it to. No. Um, but then you go to the the garage to do your service. You're about to spend you know a couple hundred quid for like the third time this year on to fix something in the car, and at the corner of your eye, there's this sparkly new car, right? This new car. Yes, you've got to make a bit of a. a an investment up front but it's going to last you longer than, yeah you know you're going it's to going to give you the same memories as the last car did but yeah. it's just going to be unfortunately better it's going to be better you know and and you're not going to have to spend as much on maintenance if it's in warranty mm. and all this other stuff you know new cars are generally if you can if you can make the investment up front it's going to be better in the long run but it, it, funny enough it's like we're talking about changing yeah the next, the next thing they're going to struggle with is change management. Yeah, exactly. So, I Getting mean... used to that steering wheel. Yeah. Or, you know. <laughs> it's nice to say you want to change. Yeah. It's, and, like, I think is I, I actually think, like, it's it's easy these days to get people to accept accept change in technology. There's been a lot more in everyone's personal lives with technology. They're just so used to it. I mean, like, yeah. like when, like, you know, on Facebook, mm-hmm. like, they'll let you know, like, we're changing. And yeah, everyone's yeah. like, no, don't change. <laughs> And then yeah, in a week, in a week, everyone's just like, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. And the next, and then after that, it's like it's fine. everyone knows what they're doing yeah. and how to do it. So, there's I an mean, initial resist. Yeah, and I think every culture has that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be teething, teasing, teasing pains. Is that teething problems. Teething. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, with that, and I just like people, I reckon, are more adaptive. But even then. People are creature habit, right? Yeah. They come in, they turn on. They're like, I do this when I every morning I have my coffee and I have to have my coffee. Then I turn, I do my emails and then I do this and then I do this and like, if you're just like, well, guess what? <laughs> yeah, we're changing everything. Yeah, now you have to do, uh, you have to have your coffee after you do your emails. And it's like, <laughs> oh no, I can't do this. How can I concentrate on my emails? Yeah. My coffee? So, I guess with the change management, it is going to be hard because you're dealing with humans. Yeah. I think it's easier these days, but say that they're still human beings, and you just need to talk to people. You li- need to let them understand. You need to hopefully, I mean, educate. It's a fancy word just to say, just like, hey, it's it's going to happen, or you know, we we don't want to disrupt you, but yeah, yeah, you know, this is what's happening. Yeah. So like, even even things as like getting them involved in the project so like i know not everyone's got time to be involved in the project mm, that's a tr- tricky um, thing but just making them feel like they're having an input is going to make them a bit more optimistic about the outcome i think mm. um so even just you know 15 20 minute little sessions or just go around asking people well i mean it really depends on how big the organization is in that regard yeah. as well i know yeah, yeah. i know what you mean it's like ha- i'm sure there's better people out there to discuss this one because this well, human beings are like I said, but yeah. I think even just letting people know, right? Like that's yeah. the most important Giving thing. Giving people warning. Yeah, rather than just well like ahead of time. one day like so they're expecting it. Yeah, and then obviously you have to train them, the people that will deal with it every day and stuff. But it's going to affect a lot more than just the people that have to use it, which is um, one thing that pr- probably a lot of people don't think about, right? Yeah. It's like okay, the AP staff in the shared service thing are going to be learning how to use this. But it's going to affect that whole like shared service system differently 
it will I mean and once you put one thing in the cultural thing might change then as well like oh okay they're, they're going to spend money into adapting things so yeah. that might smooth it out yeah yeah you might find that other departments are then looking at them and going you know when are we going to get some of that exactly so it might be a good shift if you if you actually put some technology in there that's worth yeah, yeah. the time get and effort right. get it right people will be happy but um yeah. then, then the biggest problem it seems like to be everyone's problem which I understand right I totally understand this because like I say it to myself like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't get that chocolate bar I just don't have enough money like <laughs> Like and it's true, but then again, if I'm really hungry and I really want that chocolate bar, I find money. Yeah, Do you know what I mean, like it's, like it's like when when you're if you're if you're doing like some work, right? So you're you're doing you're being paid hourly to do something uh, on a computer, right? If you're like a, a consultant or something, right? Mm. And it comes around to dinner time, okay? And you're getting paid um, forty quid an hour, let's say. Um, and it's going to cost you 20 quid to order a pizza or you could spend an hour cooking yeah i know it makes sense to order the pizza right it's kind of like this you're you know it's you're you're doing um whatever the process is um it's going to save you money yeah by by putting in place the, the technology it's going to save you time so, as well if you can make the the business case you know what i my example was you know it's a little business case to yourself Mm. going you know this makes sense but um you know you're gonna put put it in a formal document send it off to your boss that might be the cultural change though as well right like yeah. i mean you and i and i'm pretty sure people listening to this or watching it or whatever they have the same mindset as me and you that's the problem yeah me and you the people yeah, watching true. people listening they know yeah We're like, not here. like the yeah. one person listening thank you gary um <laughs> he he knows that yeah, of course. This is like why why are we discussing this? It's a this? no-brainer, yeah. But but it's convincing other people. Yes. The people that hold the purse strings. And you would think and you would think like, "Hey, guys, let's just take paper out and look how much money we save." Yeah. And and it's still I mean, I I mean, that's the whole point of like a fi- I don't actually know if that's the whole point of a financial director. I've never been in their shoes. They're like, "Hold on. There's a lot more jobs we have to do with." <laughs> but like one of them is like making things more efficient, yeah. right? Saving I mean, the business, the one thing I know about business, right? Save money. Yeah. So, save money, make more money. So, I mean, if you have a business case or even if you see technology that you think could benefit you, it probably could. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, they all go cultural change. It's probably a really good thing to see it, right? Mm. Like, when you're going through it, it's like, oh, like, one of these problems will come up and you'll be like, well, we can fix this. And then another one of these problems will be like, well, we've got an old system. It's going to cost a lot of money. And oh, well. That's another hurdle that you've got to get around. But really... You know, I, I think there's a way to get around any of these problems. Yeah, there is. Like, I mean, it really depends. I guess they call like what are they? What we like? What they call them? Like office heroes or something? Like right. that one person that like feels, you know, has this thought. I mean, it can start anywhere. It doesn't have to be like AP. It can be the financial director going, "We need this." Obviously, yeah. their financial director has way more power than the AP <laughs> guy when it comes to pushing it through. Yeah. But you need that one person to see a problem and be, or not a problem, but like, you know, just see little things that can be fixed a here and there. A way to improve things and yeah. find efficiencies. And I mean, like, a business case can be found for anything. Yeah. Let's be honest, right? Like, oh, we found that if they, we have more straws yeah. in this office, people drink more, like, water, and water's good for you. So, like... You're going to do that? Yeah. So, it's just trying to find, like we said, go back earlier, the simple things, the things that will yeah. make a big effect, but won't... Exactly. So it's going to have less effect on these things because you're going to have less people to to have to. And even going back on that, we're talking about disruptive technology. Disruptive technology, right? Cloud, like yeah. insufficient funds. I mean, these days you should be getting a return on investment on your your new technology within two years maximum. I mean, what don't we say? Don't we say like twelve? Twelve months. The way we say it's twelve months. I mean, I mean, depending on the, each case, I'm not going to say that's for everyone, yeah. but like. The technology out there these days, it's not like you have to install in servers, we have to go into your own servers. It's yeah. not like you have to employ more like, it, you don't even have to employ more IT stuff now because these yeah. these disruptive te- technologies are now, they have their own stuff. Like we've gone back, we said it before, they have their own expertise, they know what they're doing, they've got their own servers, it's in the cloud. You log on, 
you know yeah. it's like Netflix like remember when you used to have like what back home because I'm from Australia we had Foxtel and that was satellite right. I'm pretty sure that's Sky over here Sky, yeah. it's probably the same company and everything right and you like bought packages and you had like yeah, yeah. spend twenty dollars spend twenty quid you know and you get this amount of stuff it's it's um and then Netflix was just like hey everybody like do you want to watch everything in one place and like be super cheap and, and like ten quid a month? Yeah. Ten, and everyone moved over, and that's the same thing as the technology we're seeing today. So the the you know insufficient funds. It's not dropping a massive cash inject, but you know it's not going. Oh, take all this money from here and there. It's 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 more of a you know. It's an investment. Well, yes, for sure, and it's something that you know that. Um, it's going to benefit. You're gonna see the return. Yeah, you're gonna see an ROI quickly with that kind of um, things, with uh, the cloud tech. With the cloud, it's it's the future. I'm yeah. sorry if you're not if you're one of those three <laughs> percent. <laughs> probably not watching this. Yeah, they're not like what's they probably the... saw the title of the video and clicked on. They don't right? even know what the internet is, mate. They're like <laughs> <laughs> email. What's yeah, that? Yeah, uh, but I think we've said it enough. Like yeah. it's people watching this really know. Yeah, it's telling other people exactly. So, um, using technology as a tool for growth. So, back to scalability, right? So, the whole point of the shared service center is to help the, the, the whole business run as efficiently as possible. Um, and the best shared service centers help the organizations run as best as possible and efficiently as possible, but also allow them to expand and get bigger. Right, so if they're exploring new markets and new territories mm -hmm. and things like that, um, so scalability or being able to take on more um, or less, but usually more, um, you hope hopefully, more. yeah, um, and more markets, it, it you know, it's all about future proofing, isn't it? Yeah, it's future proof. That's what it is. Um, so, you know, you're not if you're we were talking about before people struggle with having budget. You don't have the budget to go and open a new office in the new country that you're opening new shared service you're just trying to sell stuff in a mm. new shared service center, whatever um, so if, if your technology you need one you only need one if your technology can can just you know you, you spend an extra you know a couple hundred quid a year or something to expand your the amount of documents that you can process or however you're doing it um, who, you know depending on what you're you're automating or what you're processing um, then you know you should be able to take on that work without having to change too much about what you do. So the big question here, if your department had to double its workload, right, twice as much stuff on your plate, um, would you have to double the size of your team? Well, I mean, it you, de really depends on the function you're doing, yeah. but if we're talking about back office stuff, yeah. which we are talking about back office stuff, um, no. Like, you shouldn't have to. <laughs> you might have to add a few new people or a couple people here and there, or you, you know, you might not. You well, might find that you've got too many people. Well, if still. it comes, if it comes down to invoices, which we're where we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, if you do like, if you do get more invoices and you're and you're not running like any sort of technology, of course you're gonna have to double your thing. Yeah. Depending on how many invoices you got, you might have to triple it. Depends on, and those people sitting there doing the same thing as the other guy before. Like there is no, you haven't added any skills into no. the department. You've just added more people doing the exact same job. So with obviously the technology being able to expand, like um, you know the scanning, the the autom like the more documents you can have. The more documents go through, go through it. I mean, this can be done overnight. Like yeah. this can be done. Like I think you mentioned earlier. Um, you know, if you're opening up in China and and you know you're sending it off to South America, or it doesn't matter where. Like obviously, ones in daytime, ones in nighttime. So an invoice gets sent. Yeah. Gets checked by the computer. If the computer knows about it already, or if it has seen it before. Um, like you say, it uses that um, machine Depending learning. Your business rules and things like that, it can just get it's it paid. Ready, ready to pay. Yeah, exactly. No problems at all. You don't have to worry about having two AP uh, clerks in two different countries looking yeah. after two different people with, you know, it's not just the AP clerk you've got to think about, right? It's the yeah. office space. Everything. It's the pension. Yeah. It's the insurance. It's the electricity. So with that scalability of growth, having it anywhere, anytime, going back to Netflix, like yeah. you can't sleep, Netflix, the same yeah. thing is. Think of, think about Netflix and like, if they add another however many hundred movies, like 
you don't have to you don't even notice you don't even have to do anything you still see the same five <laughs> yeah, movies yeah. you're like oh well yeah when are they gonna put anything new on yeah you're never gonna know but there is they add like things every day yeah. and you don't even know you don't even have to worry about the size of the movies nothing you log into your computer if the, if the machine learning has done its job you know there'll be times when like someone will send an invoice and they've just written like an eight you know or they'll have a cross somewhere and you're like well this is in the wrong spot and the computer's gone I can't do anything with this that's the time you're going to be needed yeah but like that's like but if that's flagged up within you know a few hours or minutes of the yeah, invoice coming in minutes. you could just come in the next morning and you've got like a handful of invoices that you need to figure yeah. out what's going on with so them, instead of thousands and thousands of invoices scalability should never be a problem with today's technology yeah. So now we've got three steps to digital scalability, right? Okay. So the first step here is get paper free as much as possible, right? So get rid of those DVDs. You don't need it anymore. Netflix. <laughs> exactly. You can just chuck it out. Yeah. Um, so you might not find a one size fits all solution for all of your suppliers, right? Well, of right? course, yeah. Um, so some suppliers, really big suppliers, they might want or they might be up for uh, going with some EDI, so sending some. Um, CSV files straight to you with just data, right? Mm -hmm. No, like physical invoices or whatever, or emailing PDFs. Um, some might prefer, you know, supplier portals or yeah. email or however. Um, or, you know, the milkman might have to do a paper invoice because, you know, he's not caught up with the times yet and he's. You know, I mean, like, obviously, obviously, a you won't find solutions that do one for size fit So, I mean, to be fair, you probably will. <laughs> you could do. Like, and if you trust them, if they're your technology partner, go ahead. Um, there are other companies that are like, they just one thing and yeah. they're amazing. Like you're yeah, not yeah. going to beat them. There's no point even competing against them. It's how I guess you need to change your organization, right? Change management, going back to that. Yeah, well, this is more about managing your suppliers. So, oh, okay. you know, you, your chosen technology solution might be able, might have the capacity to process you know EDI emails papers invoices scanned in uh, whatever um, but all of your suppliers are never gonna be happy with doing yes. the same thing no I hundred percent yeah no never I mean if you can do that great if they do want to do it there are ways it's probably a Guinness World Record in it for yeah them, I mean know? there are ways there's some people have gotten really close yeah and other, but then again they have but there's always but they're the big organisations with the big power right like yes. they're not the mid-range tier guys who are just trying to do their jobs we're exactly. talking the big guys who have more like well we won't do business with you and then they're like oh no <laughs> yeah. so depending on where you're coming from what business you're going to have to adapt yeah Um. so yeah, obviously, getting rid of paper <coughs> is obviously going to help digitalize your processes. One hundred percent. Like, yeah, makes sense. You know, going from physical to it, digital. Well, I mean, it's gonna like, I mean, and then like, and I know it sounds crazy, but remember, like, I don't know, I never worked in office back when my mum was, but I remember when like, you know, she was working from home and she'd just have like a cabinet just full of like paper. Yeah. Like you know, imagine that in an office back then like right. you'd have a cabinet for your paper and then you'd have the paper for the printer and because everyone's using it it'd just be like cabinets and cabinets of probably like printing paper for people that they need to come and use paper and paper and paper it, yeah just remove that I mean it you know sometimes you're going to need to print something off like we've got Rod he's like he he's you know he's the best worker here but everyone he's from that kind of like time period and even sometimes you have to tell him you can just send it like by email, you know, or he has to print it off and put it in a file for himself. And it's that change, it's that shift, isn't it? Yeah. And he's slowly doing it. The, the paper in yeah. his desk is slowly going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got more space, you know, he doesn't have to rely on things. It's he's not looking through, trying to find stuff. He's just searching for things on his computer. Yeah. Right. It's, it, yeah, you, you'd you be surprised. Like the, you, the, the benefits, you're like, oh, remember paper, we remove cost. But there's a lot of other things that you'd like, oh, now we have less space. I mean, you've got more space. Like, what are we going to, we can put all the stuff in the cabinets that we've yeah. been lying around the office now. So, yeah, of course, moving paper. There's just so much of things you can digitize in an office that you yeah. just wouldn't have thought about. Cool. So the second step we've got here is making sure that the technology that you, you want to implement is going to work across all your systems, right? Well, yeah, that's... Well, I mean that yeah. shared service centers might have lots of different 
um, ERPs, for example, mm -hmm. or lots of different uh, variations of the same ERP in yeah. some cases. Um, so, you know, you don't want to spend a load of money on something that's only going to then connect into one of those instances. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that'd be like me by like uh, like getting like Netflix and then it only working on like one phone, yeah. right? Like, or Amazon Prime. It doesn't matter what service YouTube, yeah. right? Like, that same thing is for your like your um, any sort of back office function is you want to you can be in like we go back to you can be in Australia, right? You can log in to your systems that is already connected to your other systems, right? Imagine just not being able to do that. It's about being connectivity. Yeah, it's being able to adapt, and it's being able to like I guess grow what we said before when you need to. It's yeah. I would. I just don't know why you'd buy one solution that works with one thing every exactly. Like. So I mean, a, a lot of ERPs work in the same way when it comes to um, importing data, um, but there's a few that that might sort of put up a a, a, a little bit of difficulty. Um, so just make sure that the supplier that you've chosen for your technology is aware of, of the challenges or is aware of the systems. They can do their own research. Yeah. If you signed a contract with them, maybe put it into in an agreement saying, you know, smooth data integration into the ERPs. <laughs> Must all work ERPs. with all ERPs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, who didn't put that in the contract? <laughs> yeah, and it, you know. And then it's up to them because they're not going to get paid yeah. unless they can do it properly. So they're not then going to go in. They're not going to do what you're not going to do, which is diving headfirst into something without doing the research, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, I'm, we're here. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's a no-brainer, guys. Like, exactly. I don't even know what to talk about that one. Like, make sure it works. <laughs> make sure it works. Uh, and then step three. Um, so is the technology fit for purpose and fit for the future, right? Yeah, future proving is like... So this is not... This could could not just be in terms of volume, but in terms of uh, language, currencies, formats, things like that. Is it ready to read Arabic, you know, from uh, right to left, yeah. for example, you know? Mm. Um, it might be, it might not be, but is the supplier willing to start working on making sure it, it can be? Yeah. Know? Well, I mean, that that is a bit... Obviously, future proof. We've been talking about the whole. You don't time. want to buy something that's too advanced to what you need, but at the same time, you want something that's going to allow you to expand. That, yeah, well, yeah. So it just doesn't change. It's like it's really good at this, but that's all it does, and it's yeah. never going to change. And now we're locked in for like three years, and we have to like get an Arabic guy to come in and yeah. like. I mean, you might have write to write all that in English for us because we couldn't get a computer that understood it. Yeah, might have to throw some change in the way of your um, supplier. You know add a little bit extra onto the, the contract. Um, well, I mean, like, to be honest, I don't think you should even do that. You should go to the right provider straight yeah, away. Like, no. let's not, don't, just don't settle with the what person and give them some extra money. I mean, there's definitely people out there that, I mean, know how to do it and do it better. Yeah, um, exactly. If you, if you really have to, go, but like, future, if, you, if no one's future proofing, then don't worry about it. They're not even worth it. If it's fit for purpose, and I'm assuming this is like actually like if it works for them, yeah, that's fine. That's the most important thing. Yes, like don't get something that's gonna have to make you change what what you want it to do. That's proper disruptive technology. Yeah, don't change your <laughs> process unless it's unless there's visible benefit. Well, I mean, it's always like that, though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I mean, yes, yeah. that's if it's better, better do it. Does it's, it does it work? Yes. Is it scalable? then you want it, right? No, no, yeah, of no. course, no, of course I want it. <laughs> so moving on to, to master data.